All right, you're tuned in to Adam's Workshop. We're going to be looking at the Mixig SATO 1004. It's Mixig's new automotive scope. <clears throat> we're at, we're inside at my I don't know electronics table slash lab where I tinker with stuff and try and build stuff to take over the world, and the universe, and all that good stuff. So we're going to be using the Alegu. Mega 2560 R3. It's similar to the Arduino. Connected to a breadboard. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. A breadboard with a RGB LED using three 220 ohm resistors. That's going to be producing an analog pulse width modulation that we're going to be looking at on the new Mixig scope. I also have it connected with an HDMI cable to my little screen right here on the table. Okay, so what this is doing, the analog signal is basically changing the time each one of these are getting power. You can see like the blue channel here. Down here is ground. And then when it gets power, you can zoom in. Well, actually we can, um, we could pause it. Well, let's, let's get the blue channel going. We could pause it and then we can zoom in here. And now you can see it's time base. Now we can set cursors. We can set cursors to measure. Oh, grab the wrong one. To measure each of these. Now what's neat about this, as you see, What's neat about this is, okay, you can move it around real quick, but if you need to be more precise to get it exactly where you want, you can press the find button right here. And now drag it and it's gonna go slower. So you can see we got our measurements up here, how many milliseconds the on time is at that particular moment right there. You can turn your cursors on and off over here. You can turn your cursors off, on and off using the function over here. We have our parallel cursors and our vertical cursors on and off, on and off. You can see on the bottom here, we've got some measurements you can get your measurements from the top menu here. You have all these measurements to choose from. Whatever channel you want, you'd press channel two, choose which measurements you want. If you wanna take one away, we'll take frequency away off of channel four. If we want it back, press channel four and go back to frequency. I can find it right there. And then pops up on the bottom of our screen. You got five on each five on top, five on the bottom. On channel three, I got min and max, channel two, min, max, RMS, and then channel four, I got min, max, peak to peak, RMS, and frequency. You can also get um, a counter, frequency counter up here. You can go to counter, and whatever channel you wanna put it on, let's say we wanna put it on channel three, it's gonna show up at the top of the screen here, so we'll push play or run. Now we can zoom we can zoom out all the way for our time base. You can zoom in. You can do the same over here. Same over here. We have our scaling where we can zoom 
in and we can zoom out just by pressing down on the joystick, pressing up on the joystick. Oh, I'm messing up. Okay, so pressing up and down changes the amplitude pressing left to right zooms in and out so as you can see two milliseconds five milliseconds i'm trying to stay off of the screen here out of the camera way you can go out once you go out past 200 milliseconds if you have the roll engaged it'll roll you can pause it hit stop you can press zoom And now you can go to wherever you want in your capture. And we can go right there and then we could zoom in, get a more detailed look. Yeah, that's pretty neat. It's a nice scope. This is gonna be way more than I think you need for, oh, for automotive use. I mean, all the features on here is what I'm saying. They're just, there's so much. This is a, also a, basically an Android tablet. It's basically an Android tablet. Um, so you're getting your oscilloscope plus the tablet run. You can also go your measurements for your time scale right here. Press the middle button and choose uh, down from two nanoseconds all the way up to one kilosecond. That's two nanoseconds. You're in so far, you really don't even see nothing. One kiloseconds, we're not gonna see because it's gonna take one kilosecond per division. That's each of these little squares. Look, we can brighten our squares if we want. There we go. So each one of these squares is your distance across. So if we go to 20 milliseconds, each square is 20 milliseconds across the screen. And I believe there is 14. Yeah, I believe there's 14 going across and then 10 up and down. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, 10 up and down, 14 going across. So now we have 20 milliseconds per division going left to right, and each of these are set to 100 millivolts on the amplitude. So that is 100 millivolts. Look, if we get rid of channel, let's see, get rid of channel two and get rid of channel three. So here for channel four, each square, each square represents 100 millivolts. You can raise that up or down by pressing right here. You can go up to or down to 50 millivolts, 200 millivolts, 500 millivolts. You can do the same with the joystick right here. Press up 100 millivolts, 50 millivolts. Of course, that's off the screen, 20 millivolts. Down to 500 millivolts. There's 200. We'll bring the other channels back on. I can't express how much I love having these joysticks. You can go left, right, up, down, and then you can press them. And you can also scale like each one. I don't want to do it because I have this set up, but you can hit hit this and it's going to set your cursors and your waveforms to 50%. All your triggers or up here, you have plenty of triggers in your trigger menu, common edge, pulse width, logic, nth edge, run, slow, timeout, so on, video, S1, UART, UART, S2, UART. You can bring up your menu right here. This is your trigger menu. You can also swipe out, and now you can choose right here on this quick menu. If you want a rising edge, a fallen edge, both, you can set your trigger to either of these real quickly right here. I want a rising edge. 
You can do auto auto trigger, normal trigger. And then you can whichever channel you want. So if we want to trigger off a of channel two, right there, we press channel two. And it's right there. We want channel four. Bam. And now the trigger's at channel four. Really neat and you can do this over here too here's your trigger function so if you follow the trigger you see it's up right there I can press the joystick and it's gonna bring it right down it's gonna bring it right down there as I'm pressing to the left it's changing the trigger from one channel to the next there's channel one it's channel four channel three channel two and then you could press up and down to where you want your trigger to be on the screen. Super neat, super easy. I love how Mixic did this. I'm not gonna make this a super long video. Uh, another feature, you have a lock screen and all you have to do is just press right here. It locks the screen. I know on the my previous automotive scope for Mixig, the ATO, you would have to press the power button and then you would get the option to power it off or to lock the screen then and then to unlock the screen you'd have to hit the power button again um, another difference on the power button from the previous automotive scope to this one is when you press the power button you can either shut it down or you can press standby i love that i love that feature so often if I'm, I'm out diagnosing a car, you know, I'm, I may be using the scope for, you know, doing whatever I'm doing and I want to leave everything connected, but I don't want to kill the battery in my scope because I'm out on the side of the road or at somebody's house or, you know, wherever. I can just press standby. It turns my scope off. We'll unlock the screen. It turns, turns my scope off. Well, it doesn't turn it off. It, it just kind of puts it on hold standby it's not sucking up the battery i think you can still hear the fan going but it's going to preserve the battery some and this way you don't have to turn it off with the other scope if i was trying to save the other scope when i was trying to save power i would have to shut it down completely and then when i'm ready to go back to use my scope i have to hit the power button wait for it to power up now it's as simple as that i, I really like that feature I, I like the new find feature. Um, just like you can choose which channel you want over here for the controls, you can do the same here. You can press channel. I uh, just turn channel two off. So you can press here channel and then we can press channel three. And now I'm only going to grab channel three. I'm not going to accidentally grab channel four. I'm not going to well, I guess you can move the screen, can't you? I'm not going to accidentally move these channels. If I want to move channel 4, I just simply move here, channel 4, and then I can move just channel 4. And you can take this and you can put it anywhere on the screen you want. Put it somewhere out of the way. And then turn it off, just press there again. It's really neat. Whereas over here, you just press menu. Right now you can see the green, so we know we're on channel four's menu. We can just press channel two right away. We're on channel two menu. Channel three, we're on channel three menu. That's awesome. Since we're, since we're here on the menu, might as well take a look at it. Channel two, turn it off, bring it back. Channel two, menu, invert button. That's nice. That used to not be on the automotive one when the ATO first came out. Um, and I have to point this out. This is one thing I, I really like about Mixig is when I had my automotive ATO, well, I still have it, but when I got it, it didn't have an invert button. And there are times when you want to invert the signal. You know, 
Um, an example would be like, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank, what is that called? Ignition where it sh sh shares them. Um, oh my God, I can't believe I can't think of what this is called. McFly, wake up McFly. Way spark, thank you. Wow, why can I not think of that? Okay, so a way spark system, um, say it's a six cylinder, three of them may be going upwards polarity and the other three will be inverted. So instead of switching your probes around, you can just invert it right here. So back to what was great about MIGSIG is it used to not have that invert button. I really wanted an invert button. So I contact MIGSIG and expressed how much how grateful I'd be if they added an invert button. And sure enough, on the next firmware update, I had an invert button. So we still have the invert button um, for our voltage. Um, it's got some already preset in here, BNC banana, secondary ignition, and the P130A, that's the probes. That's these probes that come with the mixing. P-130As, those probes are, um, I wouldn't say they're auto, they're not really automotive probes, I wouldn't say, because of the way they connect, but you can use them for like secondary ignition, primary ignition, um, fuel injectors, um, the scope is rated up to 300 volts, of course, in doing those things, you're going to go up to, you can go up to thousands of volts tens of thousands with secondary ignition you don't want to smoke your scope so you'd use an attenuator but you can use these probes these probes they're 10 to 1 so you would click p130 and it automatically chooses because it knows to attenuate it 10 times um i, I use a couple I don't use these probes out in the field. I just have a couple of attenuators. I think I got mine for like 20 bucks off of Amazon. They're the hand tech ones. I know Pico makes them. They're more expensive. Is one really better than the other? I don't know because I don't have them to compare. Anyway, you can choose your attenuation. Of course, that's going to affect the amplitude you receive on your waveform. And then... You have filters right here on your channel menu. 100 mega ohms, low pass. And then you can set what you want it to. Anything under whatever number you set it to is what you want to see. And then you have AC and DC. And then if you want to go to current right here, just press current. And then brings up your menu for your current. Similar, it has um, programmed in for 60 amp amp clamps. You have a one millivolt to one milliamp option for 60, and then one millivolt to 10 milliamps. And then they have, if you're using like a 600 amp amp probe, one millivolt to 100 milliamps, and one millivolt to 10 milliamps. Or you can just set the attenuation you can just set the attenuation yourself depending on what kind of probe you have i know different probes are going to have different settings on them to what your adjustments are learn your probe learn your equipment i actually have on my probes a piece of tape and it tells me if i'm using my 60 you know which one to to click on here for my probes for the scope that's me personally. I'm an idiot. Don't listen to me. And then um, one thing you'll notice if you have the ATO automotive scope is you have voltage and you have current, but you don't have pressure anymore. I'm not sure why. I don't know why Mixig took the pressure off of there. I don't have a pressure sensor yet, so I was never able to use it. I don't know how good it was. Um, to begin with, I know on Super Mario Diagnostics, he's used it, and he you used to be able to click on pressure, and then he said you weren't able to choose, like, from KPA to, you know, different options there. Um, 
I don't know, mix it, bring it back, bring the pressure sensor option back. I know a lot of people are using those. I want to get one. Um, they're really coming a long way in automotive diagnostics using these pressure transducers. Um, also, Mixig, if you're listening, I wish you guys would design a pressure transducer specifically for your automotive scope. I know a lot of us would be interested into that. All right, I think that's all we're going to look at here. Well, I'll show you a little more. You got math function here. Same thing with the math. Oh. Your amplitude setting right here. Math menu. You can do plus, minus, multiplication, division. You know, if you want to channel one plus channel two, channel one or channel two plus channel two, minus channel two times channel two, however you want to do that. FFT, all your options here under double wave, source, window, rectangle, rectangle, Hammond, Blackman, Hammond and Hannon, AX plus B. You can set this all up. I mean, it's all customizable. This, like I said, I don't even know, I don't understand this stuff to be honest. I work on cars. I'm trying to learn this stuff more. I mean, look at all this. Your vertical scale reference, you can center or zero. Pretty neat, pretty neat, pretty neat. Advanced math. Oh, I think that's what we're on, huh? No, that's a whole different one. Wow. Yeah, I wish I knew what this stuff was, guys. I could tell you. Uh, maybe somebody watching that understands all of this um, could chime in in the comments or make a video and share it with us because I don't understand this. But you're getting a lot with your scope. Your automotive presets are down here. I went over those in the first video. If you are if you haven't seen the other ones that I made for this scope, I'm starting to make a series. Um, I believe it is in the first one where I first introduced it. I kind of just ran through these real quick. If you didn't see it, I'll just show you real quick some of these options. I'm not going to read them all off. 12 volt star, 24 volt star. It's all your charging and starting circuits. Your sensors, ABS, accelerator pedal, mass airflow, camshaft, coolant temperature, crankshaft, distributor, fuel pressure, knock sensor, lambda, your O2 sensors, map sensors. And under each one, like if you go to lambda, it's going to ask you titania, zirconia, zirconia with heater, and whichever one you click on. It tells you if you're going to use their presets, like right here, okay, Zirconia with heater. Use channel 1 for current, channel 2 for voltage. Connect channel 1 with the current probe, connect channel 2 with the BNC banana. Then you press OK, and that's going to completely change up what we're looking at. So now all my settings are lost, so... Map sensor, road speed sensor, throttle position under actuators, carbon canister, solenoid valve, diesel glow plugs, EGR solenoid valve, fuel pump, idle speed control valve, injector for petrol, diesel injector, pressure regulator, quantity control valve, throttle servo motor, variable speed coolant fan, and variable valve timing, ignition, look at that, primary voltage current voltage and current again it tells you which probes to use like here it's recommending to use channel one with the p130a probe connect channel two with the current probe because the p130a's are attenuated 10 times or you can use an attenuator if you're using regular bnc one-to-one -one probes you throw on an attenuator um Actually, to use this exact setting, you can probably just throw on a 10 amp attenu or a 10x attenuator to use this preset. 
secondary voltage, kilovolts plus, minus, coil output. I mean, it's got everything. Primary and secondary. Primary voltage plus current and secondary voltage. Three channels, connect channel one with the P130A, channel two with the current probe, channel three with the probe with the secondary ignition probe. Networks, CAN high and low, CAN FD. I'm not sure what CAN FD is. LIN, flex ray, K line, combination test, cam and crank sensors, crank and primary, primary and injectors, and crank, cam crank injector voltage and secondary ignition, and tells you how to set it all up. Super neat. Press OK, turns on all the channels that are needed for those tests and those presets, and you're good to go. You can take a screenshot right here, capture. You want to see your screenshot, go to the home menu, go to gallery, and here's your screenshot. There's a few different ones in here. You can just swipe through. You can zoom in. It's pretty neat. Swipe through. Of course, you can um, take all these, put them on thumb drives, put them on a thumb drive, put them on your computer, laptop, what have you. Say you want to screenshot, it's going to take us, oh, I hit the wrong one. Take your screenshot, it's going to take a screenshot like we just did. Or you can press this one right here. It's going to take a screen screenshot and it's going to save all three channels as reference waveforms. So now you can turn your reference waveform. Open up our reference waveforms. Eight, seven, and six. There we go. There we go. See, now you see. Okay, one of them was at ground at that time. But now you can see these are the, the ones we just took a screenshot of. Now you can zoom in on them, each one individually. I like that. Instead of zooming in on the whole screen, the time base of all three waveforms. I'm saying three because there's this one, even though it was at ground. You can choose which one you want. You want to zoom in on two, your time base, you can do so there and zoom out on just two. As, you can zoom out as far as the screenshot that you took. So if you want it to, if you want to be able to go out further on your reference waveform before you take the capture, you need to be zoomed out further. Here, press reference one, same thing, zoom in on it. You can scroll through, you can scroll through. Oh, why do I have those? Up? Oh, it's right there, okay. Um, yeah, you can scroll through your waveform, looking for any dropouts, any spikes. Same thing with this one. Well, we're zoomed out all the way on that one. So if you zoomed in on it, you can go through and look more detailed. Super neat. You have a super long buffer. Um, look right, right here, 1.4 mega samples per second. You can change this by swiping down and you would go to samples and you can go to depth and you can either have it on auto or here's the lowest one, 1.75K, 7K, 3.5k and 1.75k that's if you're using one two or three channels all the way up to 70 mega ohms that's for a single channel if you had two channels it'd be 30 oops you can swipe down there or you can press your menu here and you can toggle through using this joystick right here get whichever one you want press the joystick in 
Um, so as I was saying, 70 mega points is for one channel, 35 mega points is for two, and 17.5 is for three. Um, before the ATO, the last automotive scope, much that was much lower. So you can also take your screenshot right here. Takes your screenshot. You can edit it right from there. Click it. And you can do all your editing right here. I'm not going to do that right now. You can press back. And it'll take you back into here. Um, quick menu is the menu down at the bottom. Your capture. Zoom. You can pause it. And then zoom in anywhere on your waveform. This is going along your time base up here. So all the way to the beginning. All the way to the end. And you can turn that on and off from right here as well. You can see it lights up when it's on. All measurements. That just turned all the measurements on. And if you want them all for... You can choose which channel you want. Channel 2 shows all 23, I think, or 24 measurements. Channel 3 and so on. Turn them off. Your serial decoding is in here, but you'd have to turn on your S1, S2, um, and it'll, it'll decipher all your coding. And you have this menu here. If you're using just the touch screen. And then of course your cursors, your parallel cursors, your vertical cursors. There you go. Here's your vertical horizontal and then right here is say you want to see your engine revolutions top dead center you can set what cylinder you want 360 degrees or 720 degrees and hit okay and you can go from there we're not going to get into all this right that right now i'm just showing you what options are on here down here screen lock i think i showed that screen is locked math on or off right there Reference, I showed you that, your home button. I think that's pretty much it. Not sure when that back button would work. Huh, I'll have to figure that out. Like I said, I'm still learning this scope. I just got this scope. It is new to me. I just wanted to show it off to you guys, let you all check it out if you're considering getting this. Um, the way I'm onto the screen right there, on this screen is a simple HDMI to HDMI. Um, I made a short video where I was connected to the TV in my living room. Super easy, super simple. Loving this new ATO. Was it the ATO or SATO 1004? It's a good looking scope. It really feels nice, feels good in your hands. Um, it just looks so much better. You know, the other one had the the thicker blue, harder plastic all around it to protect it. And, you know, I liked it. I still like it. It's just now that I have this one, it's like, man, it's just night and day. I'm really loving the scope. I'll make more videos showing more stuff. We'll get connected to some sensors and whatnot on the cars and play around with it outside we'll try and do that tomorrow when i get home all right i think that's that's going to be all for right now i know this video is a little long thanks for stopping guy stopping by guys subscribe if you're not subscribed if you want to see the other videos i have coming all right take care